fact, when I was, I was hired at the University of Rochester, I was the only woman um, in physics, and there were uh, 28 people in total in the department at that time. I'm proud to say that is no longer the case. <laughs> I'm not the only woman. What? Can you help us understand what that experience is like of being the only woman? Uh, it didn't. Uh, it didn't particularly phase me. I don't think. Partially, I guess, because of Helen. Partially because of my mom. I mean, she was definitely someone who felt that uh, you should never. There should never be any difference. And uh, I don't think it was a problem. When I was a graduate student one time, uh, a visiting scientist said, you know, Judy, I sometimes forget that you're a woman. And I said, well, that's how it should be. You should be thinking of me as a scientist. And my gender has nothing whatsoever to do with my being a scientist. And I think that um, always behaving that way, the way that Helen had and the way that I ultimately did, uh, made it relatively easy for me because I just expected everybody would accept me as I was. And I didn't, uh, I really didn't tolerate anybody thinking any differently. Um, I'm, I'm not the only woman now um, in my department. Um, there are, I think, three other women in the department. And I've had several female graduate students, I have one right now, um, in my classes. Often, the numbers increased in the classes as uh, the, the majors, the number of women who became majors increased. And I don't know whether it was due to my influence or, or my being a role model for them or not, but it certainly helps.